Ku Klux Klan is the American white supremacist, right-wing terrorist, and hate group that ends up on the news every so often for their racially motivated or general persecution of a group of people. Let's watch its hateful members get sentenced for their crimes. Number 5. Stephen Joshua Dinkle A one-time Ku Klux Klan leader would be going to prison after being convicted of physically exploiting a woman in southern Alabama. A Dale County judge sentenced 31-year-old Stephen Joshua Dinkle to 10 years in prison Circuit Judge William Fillmore also fined him $1,000 in an order he signed. Dinkle was convicted of physical exploitation after prosecutors claimed he recorded himself sexually exploiting an incapacitated woman. A letter from the victim filed in court asked for a tough sentence for Dinkle. Prosecutor Kirk Adams says the judge gave Dinkle the maximum sentence. Dinkle is a former exalted cyclops of a KKK group in southeast Alabama. Dinkle of Ariton once made headlines as a former KKK leader convicted of burning a cross in Ozark. The Justice Department has described Dinkle as a former exalted cyclops of an Ozark chapter of the KKK. He was sentenced to two years in prison in 2014 for hate crime and obstruction of justice charges. Prosecutors accused Dinkle and one of his KKK recruits of building a six-feet-tall wooden cross in 2009, driving it to a predominantly African-American neighborhood in Ozark and setting it on fire. Dinkle was released and while on supervised release, he was cited for multiple violations of his probation, including possession of a firearm. Dinkle pleaded not guilty to the firearm charge and was sentenced to 15 months in prison last summer. He still had to finish that sentence in federal prison. Number 4. Michael Harrison Barrett Geneva County authorities arrested an 18-year-old in connection with a knifing at a Halloween party reportedly prompted by a KKK costume. Michael Harrison Barrett, 19 years old, a senior at Slocum High School, was charged with first-degree assault, Geneva County Sheriff Tony Helms said. Helms confirmed Barrett was in a costume at a Halloween party when the incident occurred. A witness at the party told authorities that Barrett arrived at a party where a few hundred people, some as young as 14, were gathered. Barrett was reportedly wearing what was described as a KKK costume. A male approached Barrett, telling him the costume was offensive and that he should take it off. In the ensuing fight, Barrett reportedly pierced the male in the side with a knife. The victim was taken to a Dothan area hospital where he had surgery. Barrett was booked into the Geneva County Jail. Authorities are looking for any video of the incident. Number 3. Harry H. Roger a member of the KKK drove his pickup truck through a crowd of Black Lives Matter protesters near Richmond, Virginia, while his girlfriend's teenage son was in the vehicle and was sentenced to three years and eight months in prison. The man, Harry H. Rogers of Hanover County, Virginia, drove his truck through the crowd of protesters in Henrico County and was arrested later that day while he and others were monitoring another group of protesters about two miles away in Richmond. Sped through as the protesters kind of scattered um, and continued to press forward and, and then kind of we ran over the, my front wheel and my foot. According to Lieutenant Jay DeGroft, a spokesman for the Henrico County Police Department, no one was seriously injured in the episode. Rogers drove over one man's toe and twice struck one woman who had stepped in front of the truck. The fear I have as like a white person marching is nothing compared to the like fear of violence that black people face every single day. People were screaming and I thought for sure people were going to die. I mean, I mean, he sped up. He revved his engine and sped up. Before Mr. Rogers arrest, he had bragged about his actions on social media, saying this Chevrolet 2500 went up on the curb and through the protest. It's kind of funny if you ask me. George Townsend, a lawyer for Mr. Rogers, told the court that his client had been born into the KKK. Shannon L. Taylor, the Henrico County Commonwealth's attorney, had said that Mr. Rogers admitted he was a leader of the Ku Klux Klan and a propagandist for Confederate ideology. At his sentencing, Mr. Rogers told the court that he didn't make the right decisions that day. Well, the court did say that part of the sentencing was to send a message that this conduct is not acceptable. We do not tolerate hate. We do not tolerate uh, bigotry. I don't know if the victims in this case believe uh, the defendant when he made that statement. That I am committed to making sure that this type of behavior will never be tolerated. When Rogers drove his pickup truck into the crowd in Henrico County, his girlfriend's 14-year-old son was in the passenger seat, the police said. Ms. Taylor, the prosecutor, said Mr. Rogers did not face charges specifically related to having the teenager in the vehicle at that time. Rogers was originally convicted of six misdemeanors in August 2020 and was sentenced to six years in prison. He appealed those convictions but then, in an agreement with prosecutors, agreed to plead guilty to fewer charges rather than go to trial. Rogers pleaded guilty to three counts of aggression and battery, one count of failing to stop after a crash, and one count of destruction of property less than $1,000.
he was sentenced to consecutive terms of one year in prison on each assault and battery charge, and consecutive terms of four months on each of the remaining charges. Mr. Rogers is among several people who have been charged with using vehicles to attack protesters. In 2017 in Charlottesville, Virginia, a driver in a car bearing Ohio license plates drove into a group of protesters, taking the life of a 32-year-old woman, Heather Heyer. The driver, James Alex Fields Jr., was convicted of the first degree and sentenced to life in prison. Number 2. David Elliott Moran and Charles Thomas Newcomb Two KKK members who were also prison employees were convicted of plotting to take the life of a black inmate after his release from a northeast Florida prison. A Columbia County jury found David Elliott Moran, 49 years old, of Lake Butler, and Charles Thomas Newcomb, 45 years old, of Interlochen, guilty of one count of conspiracy each to commit the first degree, according to the Florida Attorney General's office. The unidentified target of their 2015 plot moved to Palatka after getting out of prison and was not harmed. The plot was retaliation for a fight between the inmate and another guard, Klan member Thomas Jordan Driver. The driver told the others that the inmate bit him during an early 2015 brawl at a Department of Corrections facility in Lake Butler in an attempt to possibly give him AIDS and hepatitis. They also had a gun in case that didn't work. The inmate was then released from prison. They later cased the inmate's home. I'll tell you, we will not tolerate, nor will we ever remain silent over the violence of hatred embedded in prejudice in this country. In an attempt to murder him, by injecting him with insulin and putting a fishing pole in his hand and making it look like he drowned. Photographs were shown to each of these men. They expressed that they were happy about it. They shook the source's hand, and the source even went to the point of asking them, is this what you wanted? And they each said, yeah, and they were, they were happy about it. All three were caught with the help of a confidential FBI informant who learned of the plot after meeting Moran, Driver, and Newcomb at a late 2014 KKK meeting. Newcomb was described as a leader, while Driver and Moran told the informant they wanted the inmate six feet under, the affidavit said. Driver and Moran were state correctional officers, and Newcomb was a former correctional officer. The driver pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit a slaying and was sentenced to four years in prison. At the time of the conspiracy, Driver and Moran were guards at the Department of Corrections Reception and Medical Center in rural North Florida. Newcomb was a former correctional officer who had been fired in 2013 for failing to meet training requirements. For many years, the KKK quite literally could get away with anything. The Ku Klux Klan was an instrument of fear, and black people, Jews, and even white civil rights workers knew that the fear was intended to control us, to keep things after they had been in the South through slavery, and after that ended through Jim Crow. This fear of the Klan was very real because for a long time, the Klan had the power of Southern society on its side, but in time that changed. Yet these correctional officers thought they could get away with their plot. They were completely wrong. Number 1. Richard Preston A judge in Charlottesville, Virginia sentenced the 53-year-old Preston to four years in prison with another four years suspended for firing a gun into a crowd during the Unite the Right rally of August 12, 2017. The prison sentence handed down by Charlottesville Circuit Judge Richard Moore marked the first felony sentence stemming from the deadly rally which saw the downtown area of the city of 48,000 overrun by neo-Nazis, racists, white supremacists, and others on that deadly weekend. Preston pleaded no contest to firing a shot during the rally that did not hit anyone. Are you sorry for, for, for shooting a gun towards no, because a I black protected, man? No, because I protected people on the steps. That's all I was doing. But you did say the N-word before you fired that gun. I shot a gun. A man had a flamethrower. Can I Why? ask you a question? If Why? you're standing in a group of a thousand black folks... You hate black people? No, I have friends that are black. But you're an imperial wizard of uh -huh. a Ku Klux Klan group, uh -huh. and the Klan has a history of terrorizing black folks. How can you say that? Some clans did have a history of terrorizing black folks, but not all clans did. And I've never terrorized a black person in my life. Preston, a Baltimore, Maryland resident, is the imperial wizard of the Confederate white knights of the Ku Klux Klan although that affiliation went unmentioned during the nearly 40-minute hearing. In a video, Preston is seen firing a pistol at counter-protesters. Preston is seen drawing his pistol and shouting, then walking toward the crowd, lowering his gun toward the ground and firing before walking away. There were no reports of injuries from the gunshot. At the time, Preston claimed he was trying to shield others from a homemade flamethrower, an aerosol can sprayed onto a lighter, wielded by 24-year-old Corey Long, who will stand trial in January. Preston's attorney, Elmer Woodward, made the same claim during the sentencing hearing. 
Woodard also noted that Preston's bullet didn't strike anyone. Charlottesville's top prosecutor, Joseph D. Plantania, said Preston's no-contest plea was a form of taking responsibility, but to date, the Klansman hasn't shown any real remorse. Judge Moore didn't seem impressed with Preston's remorse. Instead, Moore described the day of the rally as a powder keg downtown, with armed people roaming around, and mentioned a video of Preston waving his gun and yelling earlier in the day. A 32-year-old paralegal, Heather Hare, would pass away that day after being hit by a car that plowed into a crowd. A neo-Nazi sympathizer, 21-year-old James Alex Fields Jr., has been charged with first-degree and federal hate crimes stemming from the incident. Tell white supremacists, tell the neo-Nazis, right. tell the KKK, tell them all. Right. We've had enough of it. Don't hide, be strong, and do the right thing. Nobody was in conflict until Antifa showed up and started swinging. We didn't go there to create havoc in a fight. We went there to protect a monument. They're being told not to do their job by the mayor. That mayor is now responsible for everything that took place, every person that was hurt, every person that died, all of it. Here by outsiders, and it's brought here by people who belong in the trash heap of history with these ideas. But Preston's behavior throughout the day, including leaving the rally and returning to his car to retrieve the pistol used in the shooting, undercuts any claim of defending someone, Moore said. Firing the shot, even though it only hit the dirt, could have precipitated something much worse, the judge told the court. Moore then ordered Preston to prison. Preston turned and, without being handcuffed, walked through a back door of the courtroom to await assignment to a Virginia state prison and begin a sentence.